Let's discuss some of the major developments in Yojana. The first is talking about uh, the important mission of Aditya L1, the mission to sun or what we call as the Suryan mission. Now this Aditya 1 would be placed at L1 point. Now L1 point is an important point because this would be a point where the mass of the earth and the sun, uh, the earth and the sun actually balances. There are five different such points L1, L2, L3, L4 and L5. Now um, Aditya would be placed in L1 and would be India's first space-based observation which would be released. Now there would be four payloads which would have a vantage to view the sun from L1 and three would be studying the in situ particles and the fields in and around the L1 point. Now about the sun we have discussed in one of the lectures into depth so just refer for that it has the part of corona photosphere and the outer layer now this is the only layer that is visible to us is the photosphere which is relatively cool and has a lesser amount of temperature Langridge point we have already uh, explained but why do we place satellites into Langridge point the idea is this would have reduced fuel consumption because this would be the point where the spacecrafts would remain uh, at a balance of the gravitational pull the next is from the space when we are studying uh, sun we have a good vantage point l5 has a very good vantage point to study the coronal mass ejections and the space weathers uh, the solar polar regions uh, are also uh, not well studied because of technological challenges the polar dynamics also affects it the next is the pm gati shakti national master plan now this is uh, a project which focuses on multimodal and last mile connectivity for infrastructure there have been uh, things which have been based on the whole of the government approach and cooperative federalism idea the important aspects of gati shakti uh, program includes highways railways ports airports logistics mass urban transport and inland waterways the next is chandrayaan chandrayaan mission 3 was launched successfully to moon and this has been a automatic landing sequence where Vikram which had a soft landing on the solar surface India was the first to land on the south pole and uh, explore the region of that Estrusat uh, along with the India's first dedicated space observatory the Mars orbiter mission the I RNSS which is the India's own regional navigation satellite system as NAVIC has demonstrated India's capability across various things. Now again creating in the space which is the Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center has been important. There are nearly 150 space startups which are about to start in India. So space infrastructure establishment of a national committee to space research as INCOSPAR uh, has been launched and is important. The initial works started at the Thumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Center near Tirvindrapuram. In 1969, there has been a remarkable growth in the space technology. The Department of Space was constituted in 72 and then ISRO got involved with various projects and with an objective to fulfill the space technological needs for India. Under the uh, Department of Space, some of the major establishments include Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, Liquid Propulsion Systems, Space Applications systems uh, and the complete list which we have here so this would be available in the handouts you can just take back the next is the global startup ecosystems now India has emerged as the third largest startup ecosystem across the globe with nearly 108 unicorns and a global hub for startups India has started the startup 20 under the G20 presidency and this is one of the newest engagement group which has been created uh, now under this presidency scheme we talk about uh, at present the Trioka tri tri which is Indonesia, India and Brazil and then we do have uh, after the completion of this uh, presidency the presidency would go to Brazil forming a new Trioka which is India, Brazil and South Africa. Uh, there have been a series of 200 events which have been covered under the G20 presidency. Startup 20 engagement group is one of the such unique groups which have been started uh, this time which has five point action plan first is to create and adopt a startup definition increase and modify capital for the same bring in inclusion 
uh, into the community of startups cultivate uh, mechanisms to identify the global interest and finally have a network of institutions across g20 which which have five point targets that is foundation alliance finance inclusiveness and sustainability so this engagement group is aimed at bringing an ecosystem of nearly one trillion dollars by 2030 and build in the same infrastructure for india now under this agricultural infrastructure is one such thing where uh, agricultural infrastructure funds would bring in post harvest management uh, things and under this we do have pradhan mantri garib kalyan and the yojana which talks about doubling the food entitlements from 5 kg to 10 kg per month to 80 crore people under the national food security act also there have been icar uh, aspects which has been working on various uh, varieties of crops uh, various applications of fertilizers which are basically the npk fertilizers and the ratio under which npk is used is 3 to 2 is to 1 if we talk about historical background food shortage had been a great concern in india and india was one of the countries which had been highly dependent on the imports specifically from the us and this was called as the ship to mouth situation uh, where india was importing under the pl480 scheme from us uh, later on we saw a definite boom in agriculture under the green revolution uh, recently we had the kisan credit cards for short term and long term financial support being brought to the farmers to manage the post harvest expenses and also there have been various plant protection programs for example integrated pest management bringing in high yielding variety of crops agriculture produce market the apmc mandis which have been established the e nam market which is an electronic uh, national agricultural market which would be established creating a digital public infrastructure which would focus on credit insurance crop estimation and uh, the various challenges that could be taken into account now also to give uh, india's agriculture a thirst unity malls have been established now these unity malls are unique because they have one district one product concept and at the product at the center headquarters the, all the products from that region would be brought and sold into a common market and this would be called as a unity mall in assam it is near the capital of guwahati uh, there would be one such at devendranagar in raipur in Ch uh, chatisgarh in nagaland near dimapur air airport and at chumu kedima uh, as one of the centers so uh, this would be in ujjain in uh, madhya pradesh as the mahal uh, mahakal lok corridor which would have various loks for example the millet lok utsav lok nakshatra shipra takniki lok and ekam lok uh, then we do have smart road infrastructure projects which have been created and now these infrastructure projects have been uh, working to bridge up private public partnerships have good role uh, rural roads uh, provide viability gap funding bring in uh, more expressways road making technologies bringing in challenges for origin to destination data fast tag as one of the techniques which has been released which cuts the carbon footprints reduces the congestion and uh, idling time similarly in the rail infrastructure numerous development have been done starting from 1853 where the first rail was brought from mumbai to thane there has been a significant development with numerous electric uh, locomotives which have started vande bharat as one of the trains then we have the public sector enterprises uh, which have been working for uh, the railway infrastructure irctc rail vikas nigam then you have the railtel corporation as some of them region uh, Um, research design and standard organization based in lucknow is the r&d wing of railways also we have um, uh, balancing for the vande bharat uh, vande bharat express which has started between the kasara igatpuri and the karjat lonawala section of the central railways also interlocking systems by iit uh, kharagpur under the sik date which is a uh, indigenously developed automation tool has been developed now railway tourism is another aspect through the bharat gaurav uh, train scheme bringing in 33 
परसेंट कंसेशन टू द ओरिजिनल चार्जेस फॉर प्रमोटिंग रेल बेस्ड टूरिज्म नेशनल रेल प्लान टू बी एस्टैब्लिश बाई ट्वेंटी थर्टी विच वुड बी अ फ्यूचर रेडी रेलवे सिस्टम प्लान ऑल्सो हैविंग अ विजन अंडर द नेशनल रेल प्लान फॉर फॉर्मुलेटिंग स्ट्रैटेजीज फॉर ऑपरेशनल एंड कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग रिड्यूसिंग ट्रांजिट टाइम फॉर फ्लाइट सस्टेनेबिलिटी विजन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर फॉर नेशनल रेल प्लान आइडेंटिफाइंग डेडिकेटेड फ्लाइट कॉरिडोर्स हाई स्पीड रेल कॉरिडोर्स एज सम ऑफ दोज वंदे भारत एक्सप्रेस ट्रेन टू बी रिलीज अंडर द मेक इन इंडिया कॉन्सेप्ट दिल्ली कानपुर अलाहाबाद वाराणसी रूट स्टार्टेड एज वन ऑफ द इनिशियल वंदे भारत एंड सिंस देन मोर देन फिफ्टी वंदे भारत हैव बीन स्टार्टेड सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट फीचर्स इंक्लूड अ एक्सेलरेटेड स्पीड ऑटोमेटिक प्लग डोर्स बेटर कम्फर्ट Uh, having charging sockets with diffuse lighting uh, facilities for divyang passengers cctv uh, driver uh, guard communication systems as some of those now uh, the g20 presidency has been really important uh, in uh, delhi the g2018 summit was held with an idea of inclusive ambitious decisive and action oriented goal where diplomats from across the globe joined in uh, to achieve the various sustainable development goals there has been a global biofuel alliance which has been established and this uh, talks about bringing in uh, 20% ethanol blending to save around 30000 crores annually now this is one of the corridors which has been routed from india till middle east to european union from the kandla and the mudra port to the regions of saudi arabia and finally to europe through this uh, port there has been an addition of one more member which is african union to the g20 presidency and this uh, african union has now become a permanent member so this is again an important development so from g20 to g21 now port infrastructure in gujarat and revamping them for logistics purposes creating a world class competitive maritime environment is really important there have been logistic developments for grade a warehousing road and rail connectivity widening of the uh, road till navlakhi port in gujarat upgradation of the tuna road from two lane to four lane better rail connectivity to nagroi port for better freight uh, corridor green energy and green hydrogen as some of the important aspects then ship building projects in the marine areas uh, to develop cluster based shipyards marine shipyard park has been established along the waterfronts of gujarat coast from 5 to 8 kilometers uh, mainly in the dahej area and old bhavnagar there have been financial assistance with Twenty uh, percent of the contract price, which has been uh, released for the value of the vessels that has been built in India. So there has been a port policy in 1995 for development of ports. Boot policy as a framework to involve private sectors into construction of new port. Gujarat infrastructure development uh, and later developments for financing construction and management. Ship building policy for 2010 to optimize the plan and ship recycling regulations of 2015. so port infrastructure development and then we do have under the port under development project greenfield uh, projects so tuna tekra developed by dindayal port authority as a container port has been important chara developed by gmb is another important one dahej nagrol uh, then we have evolving petrochemical uh, uh, petrochemical infrastructures at the various ports of gujarat maritime clusters to be brought together international financial service centers the fin fintech city which is the gift city and the gujarat maritime universities are such as some other institutions which have been involved with it for logistics support intermediate services and financial support so those are some of the important aspects under gujarat's uh, ship building development and a ship building university in kutch district to be established so thanks for joining in today we will be covering many such interesting developments in the upcoming sessions stay tuned thanks to